Greetings, I'm Les Pollard, and this is Windows on the Word. We come to you on a weekly basis from the beautiful campus of Oakwood University, where we plunge into Scripture in order to determine how these wonderful precepts can apply to our everyday lives and to enrich them, not only as individuals, but also collectively. How we can make an impact, not just around the corner, but around the world. So we're very grateful to be here with you today. And we're talking about faith and politics in this Windows on the Word segment. And my two guests again are here and I'm so excited because they have so much to share. As a matter of fact, off camera, I had just said to them after overhearing them have a discussion, I said, have you ever just stopped to think how much understanding and wisdom and knowledge God has entrusted to you across your lifetime? Because what you just shared with me Half the world has never even heard that before. And they were just talking about it very casually. So I thank God for their humility, but I also thank God for their presence tonight. Dr. Cliff Jones is the dean of our School of Theology here at Oakwood University. And then uh, Dr. Gilbert Ajwang is the chair of the Department of Religion in that same very School of Theology. Gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's, thank a, it's, you, it's thank my you, pleasure. Thank you. We're glad to be here. My pleasure. So this is a hot topic, gentlemen, faith and politics. And let's begin our conversation by starting with Scripture. Let's start with Scripture because this represents, this Scripture I'm about to read, represents one understanding of government. And let me say in terms of big picture, we're going to have two understandings of government. They both are in 13. Romans 13, we'll start there. And then in the next segment, we'll talk about Revelation 13. So we put these two 13s together and we get some sort of picture of government. So let, let's talk about Revelation, thir uh, excuse me, Romans 13, 1 says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Man, that's a frightening passage, Dr. Jones. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Frightening passage. You know, this is a passage that was um, used against Dr. King. So, give, MLK. Give us, yeah, MLK. G give us some understanding of, of what this passage is calling for and, and why it's even calling for that. Well, thank you, um, Dr. Pollard. Let me first say that politics in and of itself, mm -hmm. it, as, you, as you mentioned, it's a hot button item mm -hmm. because politics has a pejorative uh, meaning, connotation, so mm -hmm. forth or so on. It's a bad word. Mm -hmm. It's a word that needs to be rehabilitated, mm -hmm. politics. Um, you know, people, people do not think well of uh, politics. There are some underlying or undergirding principles, however, when we begin to talk about politics. One being that uh, we are, again, we are in the world, but not of the world, mm -hmm. yet we are to render to Caesar the mm -hmm. things that are Caesar's, mm -hmm. and we are to pray for all leaders, and we are to support those who have been legitimately elected mm -hmm. as our leaders. So, 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 Dr. Jones, one of the questions we have is what should be the believer's relationship to government, and what does this kind of passage mean? Is it calling for total submission to government, irrespective of whether we believe a policy is just or unjust? As I said earlier, Dr. Martin Luther King, in his letter from a Birmingham jail, was responding to the Southern white clergy who were quoting often this passage, saying you just need to submit and let time run its course and these things will fix themselves. And of course, Dr. King had an elaborate answer for that. But what, what do you, tell me, <clears throat> what does a passage like this mean in the 21st century? Thank you, Doc Pollard. Um, let me first say in terms of politics that uh, we know that politics in and of itself, um, it had, there's a pejorative connotation mm -hmm. when we begin to talk about uh, politics. Uh, there are people who, who are turned off by the notion of mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. And I think that politics needs to be the, the, uh, rehabilitated, mm -hmm. as it were. But, but that's, that's, uh, that's for different 
and another time. I've been thinking about uh, what you just asked in the context of what has happened recently mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the death of Queen Elizabeth and how power has been transferred. Mm -hmm. And I listened to uh, a, uh, a, a, a program. I looked uh, at uh, the transfer of power and they talk about that the king now is the sole legitimate and, and, and proper um, ruler. And all of these uh, former pre uh, prime ministers and so forth, they win that rule and they, you know, and they, wow. they are ready to render homage mm -hmm. to, uh, to this person. I said, hmm, interesting. Now, we have been told as an underlying principle in terms of governments that we must render to Caesar mm -hmm. the things that are Caesar's um, that we must obey, uh, we must submit. Um, and yet we, 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 we also know that we must submit to the extent that uh, what we've been asked to do does not fly in the face of some of the very important principles. Mm -hmm. For example, if a law is unjust, then we have been told in scripture it's better to obey God mm -hmm. than man. Mm -hmm. And the Fugitive Slave Act uh, mm -hmm. is evidence of that. Uh, when that act was passed, Ellie White, uh, one of the founders of our denomination uh, talked about that that, was, that law was not to be obeyed. Mm -hmm. That law was not obe to be mm -hmm. obeyed. And she encouraged uh, members not to obey that law. So yes, we uh, support our leaders, we pray for our leaders, so forth and so on. But if they are enacting legislation that flies in the face of some very basic and underlying principles of truth and honesty and justice and equity and fairness, then those uh, dictates we are not to obey. Wow, wow. Doctor? Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Pollard. What many people forget when they read that passage, and thank mm -hmm. you, uh, Dr. Jones, mm -hmm. is the fact and that... And that passage is Romans 13. Romans 13, yes. yes. Romans mm -hmm. 13. Mm -hmm. It talks about authorities that have been established by God. Mm -hmm. So we focus on authorities and forget that they were established by God. Mm -hmm. God is the author of government. Mm -hmm. God is the author of power. In fact, if you read the Bible, you'll notice that God is comfortable uh, making humans to be prophets. Mm -hmm. God is comfortable making them priests. Mm -hmm. God is comfortable making them judges. Mm -hmm. But God is very reluctant when he is forced to give power to humans to exercise authority. Mm -hmm. And that's why kingship, even in ancient Israel, was, regulated, was uh, right. highly regulated mm -hmm. and, and came last. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying in Romans 13, that authority has to be one that exercises its power, its authority in harmony with God. Mm. Yes. So, uh, yes, to the extent that governments exercise their authority in harmony with God, and we know what, what God would will, will, will have us do, mm -hmm. as, as, as stated in the Bible, Amen. then such an authority is easy to, to, to obey and to be subject to. Amen. 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 Well, let's think about some people in history who said government was not acting according to God's dictates. Uh, William Wilberforce, mm -hmm. right? William Wilberforce lifelong opponent to British slavery, right? Uh, we can think of other examples of, of people who saw that government, even if it was church government, was coercing the conscience, mm -hmm. Martin Luther, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have these examples of resistance, yeah. right? So how do we know when to resist? And Dr. Jones, you gave us, a, already you gave us a first key mm -hmm. that we ought to obey God rather than rather man, than mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We ought to obey God. Um, are there other keys that we need to use when we look at the effect of a policy? And how do we lift our voice? This mm -hmm. is, these are the questions that young people often have. Okay. They say, why aren't we out there in the market square when clearly the actions take climate change? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Take climate change. Yeah. Um, clearly there are actions of government that are endangering the populace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And of course, one can shake out on one side or, or the other, or maybe even the third side. But how does one use their faith to guide them through the maze of those things that people say are political? How does one, how does one? 
Who wants to take a shot at that? Who can go first? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, again, um, the key is God's commandment of love. Love for God and love for your neighbor. And love for neighbor then mm -hmm. extends to even the command. The, the Ten Commandments actually yes. are mm -hmm. a summary of, the, of love. Mm -hmm. So how do we tell when a government is going contrary to the principles of God's government? Mm -hmm. Because government originates from God. Mm -hmm. So we should disobey and agitate mm -hmm. and openly oppose mm -hmm. any law, any policy of government that goes contrary to scripture. Mm -hmm. So how do we know? So, that says the Lord. Start with the scripture. Yeah. That's right. Got you. Mm -hmm. Got you. And Good. then, of course, our conscience, our conscience, uh, mm -hmm. not, not just our individual conscience, mm -hmm. but the collective conscience, <clears throat> the conscience of a community, uh, will help us to uh, determine again what ought to be embraced, what ought to be uh, followed, mm -hmm. what ought to be implemented, and what ought to be ignored mm -hmm. or just thrust aside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, these are some keys that we can use to make sure that we are moving in accordance with our faith and that we are, being, we are practicing a faithful discipleship as we interface with the modern world. One of the things that strikes me as I think about this very important topic is that Romans 13 actually presents government on its best day. This is a blue sky presentation of what government should do. It's ordained by God. Mm -hmm. It carries out His will. It protects us. It, these are ministers of righteousness. Now, if that were the only picture of government in the Bible, then, wow, we'd have some challenges. But that's Romans 13. Revelation 13 presents another picture of government, government that looks like a lamb and speaks like a dragon. And how should we then relate when we have those kinds of expressions of government that are going to seek to compromise the conscience? And even now, that often compromises the conscience. So what does that mean? What does Revelation 13 mean for the role of government in the end time? That's what we're going to take up when we come back from the break. It's going to be a fascinating discussion. And when we put these two 13s together, Romans 13 and Revelation 13, we'll have an even clearer picture of how we should live in these uncertain times. May God bless you. And we'll see you when you, we come back. We'll see you right after the break. Why I'm here? I'm here because God has called and asked me to be here, and it's a privilege to serve Open University. It's not only a place where loveliness abounds, but it's a place where excellence abounds on a daily basis. Why am I here? Because it's a privilege, because God has asked, and I'm thankful for this opportunity to serve in this capacity. Welcome back, and we're here at Windows on the Word, and we're talking about the role of government and every disciple's relationship to it. Now, Romans chapter 13 presents a picture of government that we would say is a blue sky picture of government. This is government at its best. It enforces laws that edify and support citizenry. It, um, it protects citizens. Uh, those who execute government are ministers of righteousness, according to that text. On the other hand, at the end of the Bible, Reve Revelation chapter 13 gives us another picture of government, government that looks like a lamb, but speaks like a dragon. So here is a government that in its very nature is contradictory, if not, if not outright hypocritical. Mm -hmm. Now that causes us to pause for a moment and to ask ourselves some questions. How should we live when government has betrayed its Roman 13 roots mm. and has become something other than what God originally established for it. So, Revelation 13 is one of the great passages in the Adventist canon of last day events. It's an important passage. Uh, many have noted that it talks about America in prophecy. The earliest Adventist pioneers certainly accepted that. They saw it as a, as a prophetic word that's going to take place in which conscience would be coerced at the end uh, because that passage calls for, says that, that all who both small and great will be forced to accept the mark, 
and the image of the beast, etc., etc. So here we are, living in the end times, colleagues. Mm. How do we then live in the face of a government that speaks with two voices? Now, here, here's what I want to qualify, and then you all, you all take it on. You take it on. Okay. Not will speak, <laughs> but does speak right now. And, and here's why I say that, Dr. Jones. Because the early Adventist pioneers, whether it's J. and Andrews or James White, they used, or Uriah Smith, they used as evidence mm -hmm. of the duplicity of the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. They used the enslavement of Africans as Exhibit A of the contradictory nature, the claims of the Declaration of Independence mm -hmm. and the subservience, the subjugation of these disenfranchised African immigrants that be, were being held in slavery. Okay, who wants to go first? Well, we um, obviously Revelation 13 calls for discernment yes. on our part, courage mm -hmm. on our part, and a willingness to bite the bullet, as it were, and to give evidence of how we feel at the polls, mm -hmm. at the polls. We haven't talked much about voting yet, the mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the ballot. And uh, of course, Revelation 13 also lets us know that force will be used, but mm -hmm. that's, that's at a higher level. But fundamentally, um, as, as we begin to deal with a government that we recognize is saying one thing and doing something else, mm -hmm. we can let our voices be heard at the polls. Yes. yes. At the polls. Powerful. We, we vote them out. Powerful. You know, Powerful. we may have to put up with this for four years, but we vote them out. Powerful. Yes. Powerful. And, and beside voting them out, we need to speak up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Far too long, we have kept quiet mm -hmm. in the face of um, bad governance, yes. uh, oppressive government. Mm -hmm. uh, coming from Africa, mm -hmm. I can't help but think of apartheid South wow. Africa, wow. Wow. where for many years, uh, the majority black people did not have any power mm -hmm. in their own country. And yet as a church, I don't think that we did enough. Mm -hmm. We capitulated to Romans 13, mm -hmm kind of hid under the cover of Romans 13. Romans 13. But Romans 13 clearly mm -hmm. envisages a government that is acting in harmony with God's principles. Mm -hmm. And yet the one in South Africa wasn't. Was not. And many of the oppressive governments around the world have not, mm -hmm. including the one in Revelation 13 mm -hmm. that speaks like a dragon but mm -hmm. looks like a lamb. Mm -hmm. I think that we are called upon to do the same thing that the early Adventist pioneers did. Mm -hmm. They called it out as Exhibit A, mm -hmm. the act of slavery. Mm -hmm. We should call as Exhibit B mm -hmm. all oppressive rules that continue to be either in our books today mm -hmm. or practiced mm -hmm. Im implicitly or, uh, or, or practice um, uh, kind of discriminative Yes. Actions, yes. Uh, action. So, so uh, the, the government recognizes under civil rights that a person can be discriminated at a place of work on the basis of race mm -hmm. and things and like gender. that. So, gender. so and gender and so on. We should use that to speak loudly against uh, those duplicities. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a part of the witness that's expected of us, isn't mm -hmm. it? Our, our young people certainly. Yeah. think about the world in this way, and they wonder, why are we quiet in the face of these kinds of obvious discriminations? Mm -hmm. How do you discern, the word you used, uh, Dr. Jones, how do you begin to differentiate concerns? How do you differentiate, for lack of a better term, an ordinary pedestrian ballot issue, one mil or two mil for the tax rate, uh, increase, right, mm -hmm. versus a, sub, an, an, a consuming moral concern that cannot be segregated from, um, 
from po political and, and moral action. I'm, and the reason I use that word segregated, um, in my study of, of Dr. Martin Luther King in 1968, when he was talking about the uh, Vietnam War, and they didn't want him to talk about the war. They wanted to mm -hmm. restrict him to civil rights, mm -hmm. American civil rights. Mm -hmm. And I remember what Dr. King said to Ralph Abernathy, uh, but he wasn't talking to Ralph, to mm -hmm. Pastor Abernathy. He was talking out loud, but he was speaking to Ralph. He said, it does not matter what they say. I will not have my, I will not segregate Mm. That was his word, my moral concerns. Mm -hmm. I will not segregate the immorality of civil injustice is the same immorality mm -hmm. that drives the war effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same immorality. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and, and that, that is true. Um, what is also true, I'm sure you've heard the uh, saying that all politics is local yes. yes all politics is local it all comes home yes, it comes it home to where you it are does. it does uh, your community your home your family your school district mm -hmm. you see uh, the environment where you are etc so yeah it's all we, we have to be concerned about global uh, issues as far as the environment and environment are concerned but we also must be concerned about what's happening in our little neck of the woods amen because all politics is local amen amen I've, we've said to our students uh, dr. Ajwang that uh, especially during the times when there was very much agitation around policing in our mm -hmm. communities mm -hmm. within the last two or three years uh, yes along with agitating we'd like to encourage you to join the police force Department. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because, Absolutely. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some things you can change from the outside in and Excellent. some you change from the inside from the out. Inside out. Go, Go ahead and join the police force. We yeah. need you yeah. to become uh, police a, officers. A good mm -hmm. police officer. Yeah. yeah. If, we, mm -hmm. if we don't have, if we're complaining about uh, police officers who are That's not right. acting professionally, That's right. we need some young people who can go in and act professionally. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't like the movies coming out of Hollywood? That's right. Okay, yeah. go be a film producer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. right, give God something to work with. Yeah. That's right. Beyond right. our criticism. Come beyond on, say, our criticism. Beyond our criticism. Yeah. The criticism may be in play, mm. but give God something to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor, you yeah. wanted to speak. Yeah, I was just gonna say that uh, it is not difficult to know when government acts out of harmony with God's words. Mm -hmm. uh, God created human beings in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Equal. Mm -hmm. men and women. Mm -hmm. And so any policy, any culture, any structure that oppresses mm -hmm. men or oppresses women, mm -hmm. oppresses poor people, disadvantages mm -hmm. uh, foreigners, is bad policy. Mm -hmm. And we have to speak against them Amen. and do what is in our power to stop them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what's also true is that all these bad policies benefits somebody, fattens someone's pocketbook. And there are times when these terrible policies are benefiting some of our own people, as it were, and they yes. won't speak up. They won't blow the uh, trumpet, as it mm -hmm. were, and that's mm -hmm. unfortunate. Amen, amen. And this, that gets back to the ethics and morals that you talked about earlier. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, Isaiah 58, uh, which we referenced in a previous broadcast, Isaiah 58 reminds us that we're not to benefit from oppression. Mm -hmm. And that was a part of the dilemma that the mm -hmm. people were having in mm -hmm. Isaiah's day. Mm -hmm. And God said, we've got we've to revoke it. In fact, mm -hmm. the, the last verses, last set of verses have to do with true Sabbath keeping. Mm -hmm. And Sabbath keeping is connected mm -hmm. to doing justice, right? Mm -hmm. And to doing mm -hmm. it and to doing mercy. And mm -hmm. uh, and that's what God calls us to. Yes. One of the things that I think about and that we think about here at Oakwood University is how can we do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly? Mac Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Um, and that's the call of this kind of discussion. What should be the role of disciples in the face of government? Government that on its best days does what God asks it to do, and then on its worst days, it certainly does not. We believe here at Oakwood University that we are to be faithful wherever we find ourselves and in whichever set of circumstances we find ourselves. 
not only must we advocate, we must agitate. And we deploy young people by the thousands. We say, go into the halls of legislature and don't just go there to make a dollar, go there to make a difference. Mm. We thank you for tuning in to Windows on God's Word, Windows on the Word. Thank you from the beautiful campus of Oakwood University. Go to our website. There you can support the kind of work that we are doing at www.oakwood.edu. And there you'll have the opportunity to become a faith partner as we advance the ministry and the mission of this 125-year-old institution. I'm Les Pollard. I'll see you the next time on Windows on the Word.